So uh, that song, Cut Deep, from the most recent album that you released, which is Never Had to Leave. That's uh, your love letter to the music industry, as it were, right, Matt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Everything it's I appreciate about them. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I, when I first heard that song, I was thinking to myself, well, okay, this has to do with relationships. This has to do with something with you personally. And then the whole line about muzzling the mouth after it bites you, and then it kind of hit me. I was like, oh, wow, this could be an industry kind of tune. What Was there any specific catalyst or anything in particular that really inspired that song that we just heard? Was it something where you were just threw your hands up and said, that's it, I'm writing about this? No, so that song I wrote originally uh, because I got invited to do a writing session for a really, really big like A-list artist that I'm not allowed to name because I signed a... NDA. Wow. But okay. uh, I did a session for them for their new album. And it was the first time I'd ever been invited to do something like that. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I think I'm going to write with this person. But that wasn't how it was. It was uh, they hired like a hundred different writers and put them in different studios across LA and didn't have anything to do with it. And just had people write songs and pitch it to them. Right. And so that's kind of what it was. And that person's notes on what they wanted the song to be about was they wanted to talk shit and they wanted it to sound like Houston trap rock. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, why'd you get me? <laughs> well, uh, interestingly though, the song itself, the album version of it has this cool beat to it, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Cause that's, I mean, comparing that to bank on the funeral and some of the songs on that previous yeah, album, you know, there's a difference it is, there. It is way different. Yeah. And that's because we had to take it from what it was as a demo from that session that we did and make it something more in my lane. Um, but we wrote the verse and the chorus and the second verse and the second chorus in that session. And then once, Basically, we found out, we didn't find out, but they hadn't hit us back about it being on their record. And we sure. were like, we actually really like this song. That's when I wrote The Bridge, and I was like, okay, I have to figure out a way to like make this tie into how I feel about things. Because gotcha. the, 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 the two verses essentially mean nothing to me. Like, <laughs> I wrote it for somebody else, for them to talk shit. And yeah, but you made it your own, which but is I made great. it my own with yeah. that bridge, uh, nice. which is kind of saying how dumb the verses are. <laughs> See, the, the irony is, Matt, that you went to like a songwriting conference and then you wrote a song about how much you hated the the entire experience. Exactly, dude. <laughs> so that's, that's how I live my life. So in a way, it kind of worked, I guess. Um, yeah. Speaking of living your life, the last time I saw you, it was before marriage, before the child, before you had moved to Nashville. I mean, yes. life has really. It's been exciting for you. Congratulations, by the way, on your soon-to-be one-year-old son. That's he super is one. Exciting. He is one of as of yesterday. He's Thank one you. as of yesterday. All right. Yeah. You have a one-year-old. Yes. People will tell you this is the best time. Is this your, your first? Yes. The, people will say, oh, it's such a great age. And then later on, you're like, this is a crappy age. What are people talking about? Dude, it's my favorite right now. That's great. It's my favorite That's right now. What, what? I didn't know what to do with like an infant. I yeah. was just like, I'm just here like, <laughs> cleaning stuff, I guess. What would you say are some of your, what are some of your favorite moments with you and, and your wife and your son, would you say? Uh, his like, his quirks and his facial expressions that he does sometimes where it's like, it looks like it's a bit but right. you're like, you're nine months old, so there's no way. <laughs> right. But it's just so funny, man. Sometimes I just make these faces or like be like, and I'll be like, dang, dude, you're so funny. It's the best, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There are some down times also. You know, there's challenges, of course. Anything nah. like that? No, nothing, nothing about, yet. Dude. Just you wait, man. Oh, <laughs> no, man. I'm kidding. No, dude. <laughs> wait till he's those, a teenager. Those first six months were, <laughs> yeah. dude, miserable. I'm going to be honest. Really? That shit sucked. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you get much sleep or? Uh, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I know. We've been there, so yeah. it's, I feel for you. Um, but this is great. I'm, I'm so happy for you and you and your wife and, and your new addition. That's, that's super great. I mean, it's, you know, during the pandemic, so many awful things happened to people, but I'm glad that some good came out of what you were doing. Obviously, you wrote this amazing album. It's out now. Um, you've got this sold out show at the Roseland going on tomorrow Very night exciting. here in Portland. You guys going to the Roseland show? Matt Mason? Yes. Nice. Yeah, um, the I'm curious about you know going back to the the new album um, with Bank on the Funeral. Those were songs that you had for a while. Like you had you had been writing those for for numerous years. 
But with this latest album, I'm assuming that you did most of the songwriting post Bank of the Funeral, or were there mm-hmm. things sort of sitting around that you decided to add to this new album? How did that work exactly? Uh, the only song that was pre Bank on the Funeral was Problems. That song we wrote like a long, long time ago, like six years ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I heard it said in an interview, and I don't remember who it was, that it takes your whole life to write your first record. Hmm. Um, but then when it comes around to your second record, a lot of people lose their um, kind of motivation because you're trying to ride that success of the first record. So you're sure. trying to push out a second record really fast, but you don't have enough like experience to write about. Um, and so I just had that in mind the whole time I was writing this record. And it still came out like that in a way. Like okay. It's a much less cohesive album for me. Because it's kind of like every song is about a different thing, and it came from that specific place I was in my life in those three years, like during the pandemic. Sure. So it's very eclectic, and it's very all over the place. Interesting. Um, But I did take my time on it, which I was proud of. Um, Yeah, like about three years, I guess, right? yeah, Yeah, and we had a shit ton of songs. I mean, we had like, I don't know, probably 30 songs written for it. Um, and a lot of them we just kind of scrapped that might show up on a third record or something. Nice. It just didn't feel like the right time for him, but yeah. You're the only musician, actually the only person <laughs> I can think of who uh, woke up on top of a Wendy's and was inspired to write music after oh, having yeah. that experience. It was before. It was before I went to sleep. Before you went to sleep? Yeah, I did not wake up inspired. You didn't? <laughs> oh. So <laughs> you woke up. Actually, if memory serves, you woke up with half a sunburn across your body. I woke up body. with half a yeah, sunburn, okay. and I had to shit really bad. And <laughs> I was like, what am I doing in my but, life? And the, and the yeah. terrible thing was that it was like an abandoned Wendy's, so you couldn't even go in to use the restroom there, right? No, no, yeah, no, no, so no, that's, no, yeah. Boy, life is rough. Car, yeah. It's the rock and roll lifestyle, yeah. man. It's, it's just, good now. It's good yeah. now. I'm, I'm glad, glad I did it. Yeah. I'm glad it's good now. Um, yeah. One last question for you, Matt. I, I'm a big fan of the collaboration that you did with Lana Del Rey Mm -hmm. for Hallucinogenics. Um, You guys know the song. I mean, it's just the vocals between the both of you. It's so cool, and it puts such an amazing spin on your original track. How did that work? Did she approach you? Did you ask her to work with you? What's what's the story with that one? Yeah, so I was doing a sound check on on the Bank on the Funeral tour in... um, Milwaukee, and we were doing the sound check. And every once in a while during sound check, I'll just pick up my phone while the band's doing some other stuff. And I looked at my Instagram messages, and it was in my like message requests, and it was like Lana Del Rey. And I was like, Yo, what? <laughs> and I like opened it up, and it was her saying that she really liked cringe and she wanted me to come and play cringe with her at one of her shows on her tour. And so I was like, Yeah, like, well, yeah, we'll make sure, that work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we figured out a date to do it and it was like one of my days off in between shows. So I just flew out and it was in, um, it was in Ohio. Uh, I don't remember what city it was in, but anyway, I got there and all of a sudden she was like, I actually want to do hallucinogenics and then I want you to play cringe like by yourself. And I was like, okay, (laughs) like what is this dude? And, uh, and her band like practiced hallucinogenics and cringe with me and like nailed it right away. Wow. Super professional dudes. And then, um, yeah, we did hallucinogenics there. And then I did cringe by myself, which was really weird because it was just like 3,000 people that have no idea who I am <laughs> while she's swinging on a swing beside me. <laughs> and I was just like, what is this, dude? Uh, and then we, uh, cr- or hallucinogenics uh, started to, to, rise in, in radio and so we were like we want to release like an alternate version yeah. so we hit her up and at the time she was busy and we hit her up again like four months later she was still busy hit her up again <laughs> like two months later right. and they were like she's in the studio send the track and like she just did it there wow yeah. wow what a cool story behind an amazing song so thank you for that uh, the latest album from you is called Never Had to Leave it's out now you're playing a sold out show tomorrow night here in Portland at the Roseland Matt Mason everybody thank you so much for coming <laughs>